Are you an adventurous type that likes to go on quests and voyages? This watch could be right up your street because it's called the Voyager. Well, that's the first thing. Is this a dive watch or is it an adventure watch? Well, I can't work it out quite yet. So let's delve deeper and find out. <music> So here it is, the Voyager version two from Phoebus. First of all, price, 255 euros. Lots of different color choices. There's green, brown, blue, uh, this black one, for example. They're all the same price, 255 euros, 218 pounds. Yeah, check out the websites. The links will be in the description. I didn't have to pay for this watch. I'm so grateful for Phoebus for getting in touch with me and saying, we love your video you did of the watch I actually bought. So happy days, I'm very grateful. But it, I'll keep it honest because this, this is the kind of watch that's right up my street anyway. Yeah, I'm going to be slightly biased because I'm a fan. But at the end of the day, you're watching this video because maybe you're a fan as well. And you want to know more about the version two or just a bit more about Phoebus. So welcome to the review. You're going to get to find out everything you need to know about this version two. And the version two, the main difference between one and two is very minimalistic, to be honest with you minor changes the first thing they said was from feedback from customers they've improved these screw links and i must say i've never experienced version one but if version two is anything to go by they have done a great job they they screw in and out really easily no problems there and the other clever thing they did was this case design the height of the watch is 14.3 but they haven't actually changed the thickness between one and two they've tweaked this part of here the design just to allow it to sit and conform around your wrist and sit on the wrist better and that is why they did it. They didn't want to change the thickness because they wanted to keep 300 meters water resistant. It's one of the USPs of this watch. It's, it's highly water resistant. So yeah, these are the little tweaks they've done. It's an evolution, if you will. We like evolution. So the weight is 166 grams, sized up for me. I didn't take many links out, but there's only two links I took out. So if you've got much bigger wrist than me, say seven and a half inches or above, you might struggle to get it to fit you on this standard bracelet. But I'm sure if you ask Phoebus nicely, you could get extra links. But they haven't told me that I, i'm just presuming this is a maybe a watch orientated more for the medium to smaller wrist because it is a 39.9 case size the lug to lug including these slightly curved solid male end links here is 50.6 but if you took them off and put it on a different strap or bracelet didn't have these male parts it's only 45.9 so it's quite a short little watch which is great and the height though is where it becomes a little bit chunky but bear in mind it's a 300 meter watch and it's got NH35 in there, so it's 14.3. And that's where we're talking now about the NH35. It's running great in this watch. Put it on the time graffer. It's running really sweet. It's a good one. So if you don't know about the NH35, it's a good little Seiko movement, often made in Malaysia. But they're easy to regulate if they're running not great. But this one's running really good. So as I said, it's got 300 meters water resist. And the way that is achieved is with lots of gaskets. Hold the crystal in, gaskets in the crown, double gaskets in the case back. So it's got plenty of gaskets and that is all adding up for this to be not a dive watch per se, but just a really versatile watch for water resistance. And that's sort of one of the USPs. And, and I, I think it's good to know it's a peace of mind knowing that whatever you kind of throw at this watch, it can take it. Adding to that is you've got the scratch resistance of double dome sapphire, which just adds a lovely bit of design to it. So it's ever so slight curve and it's got AR coating three layers of it on the underside with a slight blue hue, as you can see, and no distortion because you've got your double dome. For clarity, for seeing in poor light conditions, you can't beat the loom on this. This price is very hard to beat, to be honest with you. It's fantastic. You've got your 15 layers of BGWR, so it's going to be exactly on par with very equivalently priced San Martins and Kronos and things like that, steel dives as well. 15 layers is, is kind of the pinnacle of what you're going to get on this, this price point, and that is exceptional. And I can vouch for that by wearing this watch in the cinema, and I could see it clear as day for after well right up through the whole film it was glowing if you're a bit of a loom lover like me you'll love it so the crown's a lovely big chunky size which is easy to unscrew little quite dinky little crown guards which are nice and it's nearly seven mil this crown so it's nice and easy to unpop then bezel stainless steel sandblasted and polished with your 12 hour numerals on here and arabic so i should if i'm being really precise and it's got a, the loom pip as well at the 12 120 click i don't know why i'd use 120 click for when it's not actually a timing bezel per se uh the bracelet this is another thing i'll quickly discuss these solid endings like i said it's all solid uh, links with lots of polishing mainly on the middle part but it's all brushed on the underneath and so you can see it's got the uh, solid endings that fit beautifully all brushed underneath screw links as i mentioned earlier as one of the upgrades they did to this version two three micro adjusts on this beautiful milled clasp clicks in nicely 
There's not much play or wobble at all. Really easy to size up for. You should get this comfortable on your wrist. As long as you don't have that, like I said, more than a seven half inch wrist, maybe. That's the stats and specs. Let's go into more detail discussing and analysing. And what is this watch? Is it a diver? Is it an adventure? Or is it both? So it's summary time, guys. So if you've got what you need from the stats and specs, I do hope you still stick with me because we're going to analyse this watch in a bit more detail. Really, the pros are it's nice to have something, not just a dive watch. It obviously has many of the features a dive watch would have. Screw down crown, a rotating bezel, things like that. 300 metres water resistance. I think the name Voyager really helps sway me to think more of this is possibly a watch which could be used for adventuring and going on many different kind of escapades in your life. I mean, that's what I was thinking, why this piece could be very versatile. And that's the fact that, yes, it has great water resistance and it has a rotating bezel, but you can use that rotating bezel primarily with this piece for a dual time between different time zones. Very useful to have that quick setting on there. And you can also use it as a dive time as well, because you've got the loom pip at the 12. And the fact as well, it's something you you could wear for all those kind of activity based things that you may do such as swimming and snorkeling kayaking hiking in the woods going between different countries at slightly different times and all that then when you go for more formal occasions maybe or you go for a nice dinner on, on whatever adventure you're on it's a watch that's got that little bit of element of classiness to it because of the polished elements and the nice bright design and the playful sunburst kind of grain effect dial. These are all little elements which help it sort of take it to have a dressiness to it, but not so much that it takes it away from being a tall watch. I shouldn't be so confused about it because I think it is a multi-purpose watch. So the, the actual functionality things, which I think are great, but the loom is the first thing, BGW9 lasts really well. That is a, a real pro. The dial, mentioned it before, that lovely grain sunburst effect is really interesting, very different. And I think it is, it's nice to have something that's not copying anyone else. You know, it's got, that's their own thing. And I think it's really clever. And the way it plays with the light is amazing. Very comfortable. And that's helped with the fact they've done with this version two, they've, they've tweaked that case back design, which is very clever, just to help it sit a little bit closer to your wrist, but they haven't changed the overall thickness of the piece. So it retains its 300 meters water resist, retains having an NH35. So it still has uh, that good value for money ratio. I mean, just over 200 pounds is, is great value for this piece. It's good that they've done these little tweaks and the other tweak, as I said before, the bracelet, those screws come in and out so easily. It's really easy to size up, very comfortable indeed. The overall fit and finish of everything is really good. The, the brushing, the polishing is what you definitely expect to see at this price point. And there's no untidy bits. Obviously being a, a watch sample that they've sent me, they've given me a good example, but to be honest, I've bought Phoebus before and that had nothing of concern on that either and they have a reputation for good solid quality and, and I would say I would trust that whatever example you may buy wouldn't disappoint I've never heard a bad thing to be honest with you in comments and forums and things like that great to have a dive star watch adventure watch which isn't a big hulking great thing 40 mil is a great size I love the feel of that rotating bezel 120 clicks a little bit stiff it does a great job of doing dual purpose functionality and it's a fun thing to fiddle with you know me I like to fiddle with my bezels and the clasp oh that's it's so beautiful beautifully machined. It's a milled clasp, lovely feel with the pushers to open it and close it. There's no wiggle. I did have on a previous Phoebus before that the clasp was slightly, had a bit of play in it, but this one seems to be a bit more honed and, and really well fitting, well machined piece of the watch. So I, I'd say that's another positive. Yeah, and the overall styling is very interesting. Uh, I think it's fun to have these unusual angular indices. The, the hands are very angular chunky it's quite thick it's got some unusual elements to it which take it sort of away from the norm if you will and I, and I do like that element of its styling but it's not without a few faults and that's what we'll move on to now because obviously I said earlier even though I was sent this watch for free I don't have to send it back I'm not going to just sing its praises and say goodbye no watch is perfect I always say that nothing's perfect and these are only my opinions <laughs> Now, the cons, I'd say the weight, even though this is a 300 meter watch, it's still quite small at 40 mil. Obviously there's a lot of chunkiness to this piece and it adds to the weight, even size to me is 166 grams. And that's quite weighty. That is probably impacted by the fact it's got the ever boring, but ever reliable NH35, which is a little chunky movement compared to what, if they use maybe a Myota 9000 series, if they may be upgraded to Swiss uh, movement models. But then the problem with that, the price would go up significantly more. But I don't know if it would, if they use maybe a PT5000, which is very slim movement as well. Or if they use the Moyota 9000, that could help bring that thickness down. And then, but they change the whole dynamic of the design. And maybe that's not what they're going for. They do like their chunkiness. I think personally for me, 
with this watch, there's too much polish. I think if it's a tool watch or adventure watch, a multi-purpose, do anything watch, there's too much bling. And the way that this could have been toned down is if it included, maybe for the same price or a touch more, a fitted silicone or a quality rubber strap in black or different colors, depending on the different colorway you get with these watches. I would have thought that could have helped bring the weight down and made it even more versatile for you to go, well, I'm, I'm just gonna be out hiking or going in the sea. I don't need a blingy bracelet on the, on the watch. I'm not so sure on the hands. I mean, they're the right lengths. I just think the hour hand, just it's a little bit too dainty in relation to the indices. It's almost swamped by the size of the indices that surround it. It's a little bit lost in there. They could have done a better job with the loom on that track. You could, it's almost imperceptible, but it is loomed. I forgot to mention back in the likes again. I like the fact that the date is at the six o'clock. That is a real positive because very often you have the dates are at the three o'clock and that really messes with the balance of the design. I mean, I could really talk so long about this watch, the pros and the cons, but definitely the pros, as you've heard, just overall for me personally have outweighed the cons. This watch would not be a waste of your time. So there you have it guys, my overall review and summary of this gorgeous Phoebus Voyager version two. And I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See you soon. Bye for now.